Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and in this video we'll be learning everything about pre-signed URLs in AWS. We'll learn everything from why should we use it to how to implement this right from front end to back end. So we'll be learning everything about pre-signed URLs in AWS. So if you're new here, do check out my channel and if you already watch me and you, if you haven't already subscribed then they ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not. Please subscribe. All right, so, you know, uh, let's directly dive into this part. I'm not going to waste any time and uh, yeah, let's get started. So before we actually dive into the solution, uh, I just want to, you know, tell you about why should we use pre-signed URLs in the first place. So assume that you have a website where you allow users to upload any kind of files that it be, uh, you know, PDF files, images, videos or anything like that. So, you know, your first um, thing to solve that problem, the way that you would implement that uh, feature is that you would just, you know, send the file from the user's computer to the server that is EC2 server or any other server that you're using, let it be GCP or Azure. Assuming all of these things, um, I mean, this solution will only work for a very small number of traffic coming into your website. All right, when the traffic goes a lot, then there will be a lot of influx of videos, files and uh, everything into one server or like let's say pool of servers. And then automatically there will be, uh, you know, hotspots created on your servers and eventually your server will scale out to maximum EC2 instances, maximum EC2 instances, and then it will just break. Yeah, so that is what is going to happen. So in order to solve this, what you can do is that you can make use of S3 bucket and you can directly upload to S3 bucket. All right. From front end directly to the S3 bucket. So there is no backend involved over here. So the way that you would do it normally, your normal approach is that, you know, you take the AWS secret key and you take the AWS access ID and directly upload it from front end to the backend to, to the S3 server. But when you do that, you're exposing your uh, secret keys and it's and everyone can take that and make use of your uh, S3 bucket and you'll get charged for that. All right. So in order to solve that, you can make use of something called pre-signed URLs. So pre-signed URLs will give the user, will give the front end access for a certain amount of time. We can set the expiry limit for that amount of time. The user can upload the video while it's doing that. So. Yeah, that, that way, you know, there's a security um, uh, thing that we add to this, uh, you know, bucket and there's there's no exposing of uh, secret keys over here. So, um, yeah, enough, enough explanation. Let's dive into the code. Uh, let's get started. So, you know, I have actually created a bucket over here. Uh, I will show you guys the uh, implementation of it as in, you know, the specifications that you need to set. Okay. You guys can go to the buckets and click, click on create bucket, but since I've already created, I will not create extra one. So, uh, go to the permissions, just create, just ignore everything and go to permissions and then, you know, uh, make sure I've just, uh, set the, um, you know, block all public accesses off. You can set it to whatever you guys need. And the important part is the part where we set the course origin uh, policy. All right. We, here we need to allow put put is very important. Get is for you know, users so that you know users can actually access your uh, objects. So post delete this is for other stuff that I was doing for different tutorials. But the important stuff is put and get. And one more important thing is allowed origins. Now it's star. Okay. Now when you put it to production, don't put it as star put it as a URL of the front end website that the file is going through. All right. So make sure that this thing is there. E yeah. And then this is it. That's it. That's it. That's all you have to do. And also make sure that you create a IAM role that has access to S3 bucket, S3 list, S3, uh, you know, put. So, and yeah, I think I have given like administration access, but you can, you know, set limited access to the role and yeah, I think, and then get these, uh, secret credentials from here for this ID so that, uh, you know, you can access that. Um, yeah. Anyways, 
let's let's move forward and then let's just uh you know see the code that is attached to this one all right so this is the front end part where i am looking at so let me set some stuff all right so before front end i think we will just look into the back end first so i have created two repositories the repositories will be attached in the uh how do you call it i think it will be attached in the uh, description of this video so you guys can directly dive into that and actually uh, uh watch watch the whole code while i'm uh coding over here so uh first things first of course i have just set up everything i have done npm i uh, let me go to packages on and show you we need aws slash sdk we need course uh, and express all right so here we need express app and yeah this is the express app we would need and then basic stuff related to aws concords and then we would need aws config dot update where we uh, pass in the access id secret access key and region so also when you're watching this video i'm exposed don't not expose this uh secret key and access id key anyone will get access to everything of course when i publish this video i'm gonna delete this so do not even try uh using this but yeah anyways you can try but it doesn't work yeah anyways so uh next thing that we will be doing is that we'll be creating aws s3 uh you know instance after that we will need uh of course i'll just set up some uh, basic stuff for express app to run like you know listen on 3000 server and um yeah and then we'll just do slash this thing to make sure that it's running all right so let me write node one index and let's see how it is all righty okay local host it's 3000 not 3001 there you go it's hello world. all right so let's move forward uh let's move forward with this part and now um i am actually gonna you know um yeah move uh, move forward with the implementation for this one so next thing that we would need is a, a url that our front end will call which will generate the pre-signed url all right s3 pre-signed url so this is the whole flow first we need to uh, generate the pre-signed url and then you know i'll explain the uh, it will make sense in a while when you actually see the whole application but just follow follow uh, this part with me and then you know we'll need s3 params we'll need like bucket information i'm just gonna copy paste it from here because i've already done this part all right so we will be passing file name from the query and then we'll be passing query from mime type from here all right that is the content type that you need to pass and then that's it you get a url from here and s3 dot get signed url all right you need to pass input object and s3 params all right i think that's it and then you write res.json all right this is not production level code this is like you know this you can just uh you know, implement it properly by adding proper error handling like writing try catch and everything else all right so assuming this will work uh, we would just uh, move forward to the back end, uh, front end part. All right. Again, the, the repositories are already on uh, the code base. All right. So I'm already running front end. So it's running. Hello, mom. Hello, mom. It's hello, boy. Uh, it's on 5137 server. So, yeah. Uh, anyways, let's move forward to the front end part. Um, yeah. Over here, we would need uh, two states. First state that we would need is file, set file, and upload status. It will actually show the uh, upload status part. All right, then we would need an input file where we allow users to add an input. All right, I'm gonna remove that. And yeah, we allow users to add this, and then we'll create a handle file. I'll create it in a while, uh, but i'll also add this part where we only show a upload file button whenever uh, someone actually you know 
actually has a file in the input uh, HTML input. All right. So now let's move forward and then we will need upload status. This is like for front end stuff. You can ignore this part while you're implementing this. And here uh, we will first implement the handle file change. Const handle file change. And I'm going to write async and event. All right. And I'm going to write set file uh, event dot target dot uh, files and zero element. Also, if you have multiple files, if you right now I'm only allowing one file, so you guys can just you know make sure that you know you have um, event dot target dot files and loop through them and then store it in a state. So, anyways, let's move forward. Um, let's write the code for handle upload. All right, so this is the uh, important code that we need to handle. Um, sorry about this. Let me increase the file size so that you guys can see the code properly all right so um yeah first things first and it'll upload all right async first things first we'll check for a file condition all right try catch okay and then we'll make use of uh, fetch API to um, call our backend which is running on localhost 3000 which will call s3 pre-signed URL with file name as file.name and file uh, type as file.type all right so we'll do that and then after getting that we will just uh, do this which will get us the response in JSON and uh, if you are having data.url which is the value that we are sending from the backend we will make use of this particular value again and we will pass this value like data.url and we'll write the put remember this is not post this is put all right and we in the body we pass the file directly we don't do anything we don't add like you know brackets or something like that flower brackets and we just directly pass in the file all right and make sure that you are passing the encode uri important to set the correct time type all right and then uh you know once you have like this part where you um, get the result at as 200 we set the upload status as 200 uh, upload successful otherwise it will be upload fail all right and in the this part console.error error uploading uh, file all right set upload status error occurred during upload all right let's just see the code all right if you see this seems to be working so now is the part where i explain you the whole uh flow of this one i mean i could have created a animation or anything but then uh, i thought this was the best one let's upload a final pdf file all right um let's click on this one so when you do that it will just upload that and now there you go i think it's uploaded so now first things first it will call my backend which is the server that is the uh that that will not receive the file but little some information over the file like file name and mime type all right mime type as in the file type all right and then in return if you see i don't know if i can yeah i can do that so if you see, I receive a URL over here, which is the pre-signed URL that AWS gives me. So it, as soon as we get that, we take that URL and then we call this URL with the payload of the file. All right, make sure that you guys pass it the content type. And when you do that, it will send a 200 response. There won't be any response that you're seeing, but the status would be 200. And when we go to the S3 bucket and when you click on objects, reload, there you go. We have the final PDF part. All right. So yeah, I think, uh, that's it. Uh, that's it about, uh, you know, S3 signed URLs. 
S3 pre-signed URLs. Now, if you're using GCP, I think it's called as signed URLs in GCP. I'm not sure about Azure, but for GCP, it's signed URLs. Of course, there will be a uh, you know sim similar alternative for uh, all the other cloud providers. Um, yeah, I mean, there's more to it actually. I have you know there is let's say assuming uh, you allow users to upload like 12 GB of content. So one network request will not be able to send that much amount of data. I think there is a limit for each uh, each uh, network request. So you have to solve this by making use of something called multi-part uh, signed URLs. Uh, that part, I will uh, cover it in a different video. If you guys uh, want me to make that, just comment down below and let me know if you guys want me to make a video on that particular thing. Um, anyways, Thank you so much for watching the video if you're new here please please subscribe to my channel and uh, support me by joining my community uh, and then yeah thank you so much see you guys in the next video till then goodbye and take care